This is the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. All right, we are the prophets in Babylon, Tampa, Florida. Uh, first and foremost, we want to open up by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Rakakwadash. All right, I'm the brother of Bagabar. Tazamak Kamath. All right, and you know, double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone who do indeed teach Ruel. Let me go ahead and turn this camera around so y'all can see the view. There you go, Lord willing, brothers and sisters can see the view. Let me zoom in again. All right, and you know, you see the title, The Chastening of the Lord. We're going to go into the chastening of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and how the Lord loves. Uh, you know, he shows his love through uh, chastening us. All right, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And you know, the scripture that the brother just brought out, if you could actually just bring it back one more time. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. If you could just grab the definition of chasten, Prabhu Kusha. You know, uh, you know, who the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and he scourges, he punishes. You know, so don't think it a strange thing, brothers. We're supposed to suffer in this truth, man. You know, this world is not our ours right now, okay? This is Esau's world right now. We are being punished for our wrongdoings, for our sins. As the scriptures say, we suffer because of our sins. But the whole point is, are you going to endure the chastening? Can you endure? Can you be long-suffering? Can you prove your patience, okay? That word patience goes into suffering. Okay, the Lord told us that we have to be patient. All right, and your patience possesses ye your, your souls, souls, man. All right, so and your patience possesses ye your souls. We're coming into the worst time in history, man. You know, so the, the little hell you catch in this everyday life, it ain't shit compared to what's about to come come down on this earth, man. All right, so you know, from your woman, your job, you know, uh your house you know just dealing with people in the world jake in the world none of that shit should uh cause you to really bug out you know to the point of falling out of this truth which at the end of the day it's all predestined you know we just hope and pray to be numbered amongst the elect we want to be numbered amongst the elect and you know there's really nothing you can do to be numbered amongst the elect but the elect will be long suffering the elect will endure the chastening. The elect will endure all the way to the end. All right? You got the definition? Yeah, this is uh, Merriam-Webster. This is the definition of chastening. It says to correct by punishment or suffering. Mm. And then um, going down to the second. It said to correct mm -hmm. by punishing or suffering. All right? So when you catch hell, hell, the other day I was, I was just talking to this brother about it. I was driving on the highway and my fucking tire blew out. Okay, on the highway, you know, I immediately pulled over, got the tire changed, but, you know, that right there, in a, in a sense, is a form of chastening. You know, I could have got butt hurt and, oh, my God, da, 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 da. no, I, hey, all praises to you, how about you, how was shot, man, kept it moving. All right, got a new tire, everything was good, but the Lord chastens us with little things, man. You know, it's little things that would get under your skin, you know, but it's to, it's to mold you into a man. Okay, for the times that we're coming into, you're going to have to be unmovable. The scriptures say, be ye unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. So in the times we're coming into, you're, you're supposed to be the man that can brush things off of his shoulder. Like nothing. Like it ain't shit. And I'm talking about when you see death in front of you, that should be a, a, a brush off the shoulder. That's what this truth is preparing us for. That's what the Lord is preparing us for. Okay, day in and day out. The scripture says, you know... Uh, all the day long, we are killed all the day long, you know, though the outward man perish, the inward man is being renewed day by day. So the Lord is chastening us, man, you know, so don't think this suffering to be like some strange thing. No, this is rebuke and love from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. If you're not getting rebuked by the Lord, that's when you got to be on edge, you know, be on the lookout because that's when you know some shit's coming. If you're an Israelite, and you're not getting chastened by the Lord right now, you better be looking over your shoulder because that chastening is coming. All right? Go ahead, Ak. And it, uh, also, it says to purify, mm. you know, 
I have a scripture to go along with that. Go ahead. Uh, Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. You can bring it down. Huh? You know, so, hey, the Lord said, you know, I have not refined thee with silver. You know, because when you put a silver in a furnace, it refines it. It purifies it to a certain extent. So, you know, so in the time of affliction, we're coming out clean, you know, and during during the chastisement and things like that and that's what the lord wants us to be that's so. right you know and you know that that when you when you uh melt the impurities off of fire or off of um metal metal like um gold and silver they got to put it through the fire yeah it has to go into the fire so it melts off all the impurities of that and it goes through a real hard harsh process but when it's done it comes out pure okay that's what the lord is doing with us Okay, because, you know, the scriptures say, and I got the scripture, we'll grab it. We suffer because of our sins, man. The reason we suffer is because of our sins. All right, so you can't be no bitch either, man. Can't be no bitch. Can't be no crybaby. Don't be the guy that whines and complains every time he catches a little hell. You go to whining and complaining like a female. That's what females do. Females don't know how to be long-suffering, be patient, endure. As soon as something happens with a woman, she goes to complaining, crying. But guess what? You got a lot of men out here that are in the same stead of these women, man. Were raised by their by they mamas, you know. And really, they were just bitch made, man, you know. And as the scriptures say, though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, man. If you get a little bugged out over some curse words, hey, man, go watch some Barney or some shit, man. This, this video is probably not for you. All right, especially we going into the chastening of the Lord. We're about to come into the worst time of history. You know, if you can't take a little curse words here and there, <laughs> you're definitely not going to be able to endure the hardship and, and hard times that are coming, man. Mm -hmm. All right. I have also the second definition. It says to cause to be more humble mm. or restrained. Yeah, because the scriptures say that the Lord hates pride. And you know what? I'm going to grab that real quick. So what is the Lord doing? He's humbling us. All right, the Lord is humbling us. Let me grab this real quick. This is a uh, Sirach chapter ten and seven. It says, "Pride is hateful before God and man, and by both doeth one commit iniquity." Uh, Proverbs eight uh, thirteen. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. So read that definition one more time, Mike. Time. The second definition of chastening, it says to cause to be more humble or mm. restrained. And hey, as a man, that's what we all need. I tell you right now, I need more humbling. Speaking as a man, you know, we're, we're being made into the image of Yahweh Shad, man. All right, and through that process, it takes a lot of humility before honor. Let me grab that real quick before I even quote it. Let me see if I can find it. You want to grab it real quick before it's honor? You know, uh, let me see if I can find it. Some problems. Yeah, here it is right here. This is uh, Proverbs 15 and 33. The fear of the Lord is the, is the instruction of wisdom. Okay, so you got to have the fear of the Lord. It says, and before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. So before we can get the riches, the glory, the fame, because that's another thing. We're going to be famous, man. Right now we're infamous, but we're literally going to be famous all throughout the earth. Okay, you know, we're going to get everything you can imagine. The gold, the the gems, the diamonds, the mansions, the pearls, the you know, women. The respect. The respect, the honor, the glory, the power. You know, we're gonna get all of that, you know. But before honor is humili uh, humility. So right now we have to go through a humiliation process, man. And once you've proven that you can deal with the humility, then you've just proven that you can deal with the power, man. Okay, wise words from the elder Apostle Gabar, you know, roughly paraphrasing, but that's the, that's 100% true. 
Once you have proven that you can deal with the humiliation, you have just proven that you can deal with the power, man. Okay, we got it. If we're going to have power, we're going to have to be humiliated, man. Okay, we're going to have to know what it is to be a righteous ruler, a righteous judge, know how to call the shots. <laughs> Jake nowadays be calling the shots off of pure emotion, man. No humility. You know, no, when we call the shots in our kingdom, it's going to be it through humility. Okay? And through the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we are going to rule the nation with a rod of iron, man. So we're going to have power beyond belief, man. We're going to be beating these nations into subjection, man. Okay? So I have a scripture back along with you. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Proverbs 24 and 10. If thou faint in a day of adversity, thy strength is small. Ooh, if thou faint in a day of adversity, thy strength is small. So you can't faint when you catch in hell, man. When you're going through hard times. You got Jake that give up. They turn their back on the plow. They come into this truth and they get offended for the word's sake. They realize that it ain't, you know, just peaches and cream when you come into the truth. And they just fall out. They bug out. Well, ultimately, at the end of the day, if you're not of the elect, the Lord is going to put a stumbling block in your way to have you <laughs> take that route. Mm -hmm. You know, but the strong... The elect, nothing will be able to move their faith. And we pray to be numbered amongst the elect, man. Nothing, no matter what it is. If you lose family members right in front of your face, if you lose your legs, lose your arms, get diagnosed with a sickness, whatever it is, if you're of the elect, you will not be moved by that. And you will still remain to be faithful in your hell about Shimei Hawashai. And that's the, that's the trying process. And your patience possesses you, your souls. How bad do you want to get? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want to get to the kingdom? Do you really believe? These are questions you got to ask yourself. Is this for you? Are you ready for what's about to come? Are you ready for to be demonized? Face on the television. Everybody that everywhere you go, people are going to be laughing and mocking and scoffing you, talking shit. Are you ready for this? A lot of people are not ready for this, man. Even the ones that claim to be Israel. And look, humbly speaking, I pray Yahweh Shemi Yahweh Shai put the spirit on me to endure that. You know, because it's all Yahweh Shemi Yahweh Shai's will at the end of the day. You can't make yourself of the elect. You can't make yourself not of the elect. But the elect are going to endure through all the hardship. Okay. Go ahead, Ark. Was that it on that? Yeah. Go to the, um, what is that? Second Ezra 7. There's another thing. A kingdom is builded and all, uh, uh, full of all good things. I think it's Second Ezra 7. Grab that for me real quick, man. Because we're going to go into this. Yeah, Second Ezra 7. Start at verse uh, 6. You know, we're, we're taking this narrow pathway, man. The pathway to the kingdom of heaven is narrow. Okay, the Lord said what? Enter in at the straight gate, a position of difficulty. If it was easy, anybody can do it. Hell, even the greats of this world, the Michael Jordans, you know, the Floyd Money Mayweathers. If it was easy, everybody could do it. They had to struggle to get to their position. They had to be long suffering. That's on a worldly sense. So how much more us? To be kings and rulers of the whole earth. We got to be humble. We got to be humiliated. We got to want it. You got to want it. The Lord is looking at the ones who wants it. And the ones who want it are going to prove it to him. Okay? Right. You're going to prove your long suffering. You're going to prove your patience. Not to no man. To the Lord. Don't prove it to me. You know, or, or to your camp leader or to... The elders, no, prove it to you. How about Shimei How was Now you give these men reverence, you know, and uh, for the position that they have. That's why we give double honors to the elders and apostles. But you, you're before you prove it to any man on this earth, you're proving it to the Lord, man, that you can deal with it, that you're ready to be a king. And through that, the Lord is going to try you. Okay, He's going to see what you're made of, man. If you're made of sticks, if you're made of stones, if you're made of gold, He's going to see. He's going to prove it. Go ahead, Ark. Uh, as they say in the world, hey, I'd rather prove it to myself before I prove it to you. That's it. That's it. 
you know and that's the one thing the elect have okay the elect have that drive that confidence that confidence that drive to never quit to never give up no matter what obstacle is in your way you're gonna figure it the fuck out man you're not gonna be a bitch you're not gonna complain you're not gonna cry you're gonna get you're gonna get the shit done Hey, <laughs> excuses and opinions are like assholes, man. Everybody got one. You can come up with your own opinion. You can make excuses. But if you're a king, you're going to overcome any obstacle in your way, no matter what it is. And that's the mentality we all have to have as men. Before we can be men of the Lord, we got to be men. But go ahead. Ar this is uh, 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 6. There is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field and is full of good, full of all good things. Full of all good things. Okay, this city is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, this is what we're looking forward to. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Yasha Allah. Go ahead, Ak. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. You see that? So... The kingdom is set in a dangerous place to fall. Okay, we got to go through hell. We got to go through Jacob's trouble. We got to go through the chastening. We got to fight. We got to continue to fight the good fight of faith. It's a never-ending battle all the way to the kingdom. All right, it says like as if there was a fire on the right hand and on the left the deep water. It's a tightrope, man. Imagine you walking a tightrope and on the left you got fire. On the right you got water. All right. These people weird, man. They got demons on their ass. <laughs> Staring in the camera and all. Bro. Like, we don't even know we got a video going. <laughs> you know? But, hey, that's how people are going to be looking at us. People are going to be looking at us crazy. You know? You know? And that's another thing. When you got this truth, man, you got a different glow about you. People are trying to figure, figure you out. Like, I was watching that movie. Damn, what was that movie called, man? With Leonardo. Uh, DiCaprio? Yeah, man. With the dreams. I don't know what you're talking about. It was mentioned. I, I think, was. Last I was. Week. I think it starts with an I. Inception, I believe it was. Inception, and pretty much in the, in this movie, you know, people would lock eyes to you if pretty much you knew that you were in a dream, you know. So pretty much you have a different glow, you know. But hey, nonetheless, the elect, you brothers, got a different glow about you, man. You know, everywhere you go. You got that wisdom. Scriptures say wisdom maketh a, a man's face to shine. But nonetheless, back on topic, 2nd Ezra 7 and 7, it says, The entrance thereof is narrow and set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there was a fire in the right hand and on the left a deep water. So this this a walk to the kingdom is a straight gate. It's a, it's a tight rope. If you fall over to the left, you're going to drown. If you fall over to the right, you're going to get burned. So you got to be walking straight. Got to walk that straight line, that straight path. Go ahead, Ark. Verse 8, it says, And only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so so small that there could but only one man go there at once. So you see how tight it is, man? You know? And in that, you're going to have the chastening of the Lord. You're going to be getting punished. You're going to get rebuked. You're going to suffer wrongfully. You might get rebuked and it might be wrongfully, but you got to take it as a man. Okay? The Lord ultimately is the judge. Give all praises to you. How about you? shy. Suffer, man. We're in this truth to suffer, man. A wise words from the elder apostle Tahar. Learn to love to suffer. Mm -hmm. Learn to love to suffer. At first, you know, you're like, what the hell does that mean? Then you realize you're in this truth to suffer. Okay? The Lord suffered for our sins. So now we got to suffer for our own sins as well. Okay, now at the end of the day, the Lord, you know, the Lord was that ultimate sacrifice. He has redeemed us. You know, he was that sacrificial lamb for the nation of Israel. But as the scriptures say, let me just grab this real quick. Second Maccabees 7 and 32, for we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, Yet shall he be at one again with his servants. So we're going to be at one with you, Haobashim Yahushai, yet again. But why do we suffer? You, you suffer because of your sins. Stop trying to point the finger every time you suffer. Examine yourself. 
When you catch hell, examine yourself. Don't try to play the blame game. That's what a woman does. Okay? Always tries to play the victim. Don't do that. When you catch hell, look at yourself. Examine yourself. Understand you deserve that. Understand that it's making you stronger. Go ahead. Back to 2nd Ezra. 2nd uh, Ezra 7 and 9. If the city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? How shall he receive this inheritance? So how are you going to receive the kingdom if you don't go through Jacob's trouble? If you don't catch the hell? If you don't suffer right now? How do you expect to be of the elect if you're not suffering now? It's either you're going to suffer now or you're going to suffer later. At the end of the day, you know, we're going to suffer now, man. <laughs> yeah, how shall I write desire the Lord keep us in this, in this truth, man, to be able to endure? You know, because Jacob's trouble is going to be a hard time. It's going to be chastening for the whole nation. Even the elect going to be chastened, you know. But the thing about the elect is we're going to have that hedge of protection. We're going to be protected, you know. Only with thine eyes shall thou, be see the, uh, shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. You know, so we're going to be getting chastened too, man. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's just going to be on a different level. We're going to have the protection of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shad, man. Lord going to make a way for us. You know, with the temptation, the Lord is going to make it a way to escape for us. But we're still going to have to walk that straight and narrow, man. All right? And that's what we asked Jake when we're at camp. You know, hey, man, you want to go to the kingdom, but you don't go through shit. You know, we, we out there putting our, our bodies as a living sacrifice, catching hell for you. How about you, all shy? But you want to make it to the kingdom. You want to inherit all these things, you know, but you're not putting action towards the Lord. Hey, Lord, I really want it. You know, put me through the, the through the test, through the fire, you know, and that's what we're going through now. I have the scripture. Go ahead, I. Uh, First Corinthians eleven and thirty one. For if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. Mm, so you gotta, if, like I was just saying, when you catch hell, Jake, go to pointing the finger. Examine yourself, judge yourself, prove it to the Lord. You don't got to prove it to no man on this earth, man. Prove it to you how about me, how was shy. And if you do that, all praises, you're going to be an example for the next brother. That's the whole point. We are set up as shepherds, set up to lead, set up to set great examples. Hey, these damn celebrities, the greats of this world, they're examples on how to be wicked. Okay? Now, don't get me wrong. They have, like, the Floyd Money Mayweather and, you know, um, the greats of this world. They had to be long suffering to get that position as well. You know, they had to have some type of uh, temperance, you know, but in that industry is to be wicked, man. For us is to be righteous. We're being chastened to be righteous, to be kings, to be rulers, man. A whole different spectrum. So our chastening is like a million times more, man. All right. Verse 32, it says, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord mm. that we should not be condemned with the world. That what? That we should not be condemned with the world. You see that? So the Lord is chastening us. You know, when the Lord judges us, when you catch hell, you, you know, whatever it is, your tie goes flat, you stub your toe, your woman leaves you, you lose your job, you know, you get a bodily ailment, whatever it is. And so you will not be judged with the rest of the world, man. The Lord is, suff uh, is you know, chastening you because he loves you, man. But then once you, the, what the Lord will do is he'll He'll put you through a punishment and he'll look at your inward man. Can you grab that, tries the reins of the heart? Yeah. You know, because the Lord will put you through hell and now he's looking at your, your mind. He's seeing if you're going to fold in your mind. Because you can act calm and collect, you know. But your mind, the Lord is looking at your mind. Okay, he's looking at the inward man. Go ahead, Doc. This is uh, Jeremiah 17, start at verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. Yeah, the heart, the la'ab, the mind. Okay, deceitful above all things. Go ahead. And desperately wicked. Yep. Who can know it? Right. I, Yahweh, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways. I, well. It says, I, the Lord, search the heart, the mind, 
I, the Lord, search the mind. He said, well, I try the reins, which is the depths, the depths of your mind. The Lord is in the depths of your mind. The deepest, darkest positions of your mind, the Lord is right there. And then he's going to give you according to your ways, man. I was thinking about it today. It's like the Lord will literally put you through shit that you fear. Because we're not to fear anything. We're to fear Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shab, man. So as soon as you start fearing something, it's like you run into it. <laughs> you know, I remember I remember this when I was young. I would never forget this shit, man. Personal testimony. I was riding a bike. I was like five, six years old. I just got my training wheels off, ready, riding my bike, you know, fast. And I'm looking at this mailbox. And Satan planted a seed in my head like, I don't want to hit this mailbox. And I had fear. I had fear that I was going to hit this mailbox. And I'm riding. I can't. I don't know how to stop the bike yet. And it's like, as soon as I started fearing, my mind was like a magnet to the mailbox. <laughs> I started going full speed to the mailbox. And it's like, I hit it. And it was like, the Lord was like, showing me like, whatever you fear, you, <laughs> you're going to have to face. You know? So the Lord is making us fearless, man. And the times we're coming into, we're going to have to be fearless, man. And the Lord is looking for the ones that are not fearing man. With that, the one, the Lord is looking for the ones that fear Him, that fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that don't allow none of the chastening that's going around phase you. That's nothing, okay? The Lord is chastening us, you know, to ultimately turn us into gods, man. That's a, that's a heavy responsibility. Uh, Jeremiah seventeen and ten, I Yahweh search the heart, I try the reins. Even to give every man according to his ways And according to the fruit of his doings mm. So the Lord is going to try your heart, your mind To give you according to your ways Okay And the Lord is in the depths of your mind Whatever you fear You're going to have to conquer it, man One way or another Either you're going to conquer it in the spirit Or you're going to have to go through it in the flesh and conquer it Either, either or You know, the elect is going to conquer it all right, we are here as conquerors, man. We are here to conquer. We're not in this truth to fail. We're not in this truth to give up. We're not in this truth to stop. We're in this truth to continue and to conquer. Okay, and it's all through your help, Bashimi Awashai. Man's goings are of the Lord. If a man falls out, man's goings are of the Lord. If a, if a man endures all the way to the end, man's goings are of the Lord. It's all predestined. Yeah, precept. Go ahead, you can break it down. This is a uh, second Ezra 16 and 73. Then shall they be known. I was just about to grab it. That's the spirit. Call all your help out to me. I wish I go ahead. Go ahead and grab that. Man. Second Ezra 16 and 73. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Mm. You know, so when we go through Jacob's trouble, like the brother said, man, that's gonna be a heavy chastisement to all Israel. You know, and then we endure through that. The Lord said, hey, that's we going to know who are my chosen because mm -hmm. the Lord protected us through all that. And we didn't fail mm -hmm. going through that. We endured. All right. We're giving praise to Yahweh. Shem, Yahweh Shem. We keep in faith. We're <laughs> believing. You know, we know the Lord is going to help us through the scriptures. He tells us that. Hey, that's it. Hey, even when you go into the jabs, man, when 2020 happened and they tried to force them jabs upon everybody, who stood strong? The men of the Lord, man. Who stood stiffly? Who stood strong? Who stood stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? The men of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. And that was just a small inkling of, then shall it be known who am I chosen? That's just a, a small reference. How much more when you got to take the Karagma? Or it's death. Famine. Famine. There's famine out here. And then, then it's really going to be known who am I chosen? The Lord is going to make it known. And that's when the Lord is going to be with us. The Lord is going to strengthen us. The Lord is going to give us food, water, drink. The Lord is going to have us, give us shelter. You know, but we're going to have to prove it. We're going through a proving ground right now. All right, you got to prove it. Once you have proven you can deal with the humility, then you have proven you can deal with the power. Okay, and that spiritual power is coming, man. But the Lord's not just going to give spiritual power to some nigga, man. If some nigga got spiritual power, he's going to use it for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> He's gonna be out here being a fucking bozo, but if an elect man of the Lord had spiritual power, he's gonna use it for good. You know, which we understand was good according to the scriptures. You know, 
Anything that's the opposite of evil. You know? Esau Edom, he's evil. He's a damn devil, man. Right. All right? There's going to be times where you're going to have to use that power to fuck some shit up, man. <laughs> in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, righteously. Yeah. Going to be jacking shit up in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. It's going to be righteous, man. The scriptures say, um, King David said, Do I not hate them, O Lord, that I hate, hate thee? Me. I hate them with perfect, perfect hatred. hatred. I hate them with perfect hatred, man. It's a righteous thing to hate evil, man. It's a righteous thing when you see two freaking fruit flies walking down the street holding hands that you just want to fucking throw their ass across the fucking bleachers and fucking throw a building on their ass. It's a righteous thing to be mad at women being harlots out here, man. You know? It's a righteous thing to hate evil. All right? But you got two-third niggas out here that they love, they love evil, man. They love being evil, man. And kind of like they say in um, Spider-Man, hey, with great power comes great responsibility. Mm. You know, so being this truth comes with a lot of things you got to deal with. You know, and the Lord, if the Lord's going to give you that power, you got to know how to handle things before he gives it to you. You know, being in this truth. And that's scriptural, what the brother just said. This is Luke 12 and 48. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whosoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. All right, so we have been given a lot in the spirit. So what much is required of us? The more the more power you want, the more power you're going to get, more is required. Okay, we already have the spiritual power. It's breaking down these scriptures right now, man. It's spiritual and there's power in that. Okay, so much has been given to us, so much is required. Brothers, you got to do lessons. You still got to fucking survive in this wicked world. Got to go to your your job, you pay your bills. Use the use the world is not abusing the world. And then on top of that, you got to do the work of the Lord. Why are you getting chastened? Why are your woman giving you hell? Why are your job getting you hell? <laughs> Everywhere you go, it's just the Lord just like chastening you. But it's purging you. Grab that, um, the outward man and the inward man. Renew day by day. Baba Kusha. Because that's what it is. We're going through the chastening of the Lord. You know, but what are you made out of? Are you, what, are, what are you made out of? Are you made of straw? Are you made of, you know, rocks? Are you made of gold? The Lord's going to try you. You going to see what you made out of. Anybody can say, I'm a man of the Lord. I'm a man of the Lord. The Lord's going to prove. He, okay, prove that then. And how are you, you going to prove it? You're going to have to go through some shit. You're going to have to catch hell. You're going to be put at the bottom. You're going to be scoffed at. You're going to be mocked. You're going to be hated. Look at, and the greatest example is Yahweh Shai. Our Lord Yahweh Shai is the greatest example of what it takes to receive power. Our Lord Yahweh Shai is the greatest example of what it takes to receive power. The greatest man to walk on this earth, he has spiritual power and people still hated him. People still despised him. He was healing people. He was raising the dead, changing water to wine, walking on water. People hated him. People spat on him. People led him to be crucified. His own people. So the scriptures say the servant is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. So are you ready for that? Have you counted the cost of what you're a part of? At the end of the day, the elect are going to overcome and you will get that power, brothers. That's the reward. Power. Infinite power. Power that can be felt, you know, coursing through your veins. Infinite, holy power, man. How bad do you want it? The Lord is going to, he's going to, it's, it's like, that's what this truth is. This truth is like dangling. It's like the Lord's dangling that power in front of us. Like, this is what you're going to get. This is what you're going to get. You see what you see. You see what you see it. How bad do you want it? 
He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We want to be saved, man. And the ones that get saved are the ones that are going to get that power, man. True power. Go ahead, Doc. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4 and uh, 4 and 16. It says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Mm. Go ahead and jump up a verse. Verse 15. Yeah. Yes, yes. Second Corinthians 4 and 15. For all things are for your sakes. Woo! It didn't say some things. It didn't say for the good things are for your sake. No, it said for all things. All things. The good, the bad, the ugly, the dirty, the beautiful. Everything you go through is for you. And we all got we all come from different paths. We all come from different environments, different walks of life. So the Lord has, you know, pretty much sanctioned your personal hell for you. For you to overcome. And it all goes into the depths and the darkest parts of your mind. The Lord tries the reins of the heart. He's looking at your inward man. Okay? And he puts you through the shit that you got to overcome. You might not have to overcome something that already over overcame. You might already overcame it from, you know, when you was a child. You know? Certain brothers got to overcome different things, man. All right? That's the fight. Go ahead, I'll read that again. 2 Corinthians 4 and 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And we give thanksgiving in all. That's how you're supposed to be. You're supposed to give thanksgiving to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, whether it be good or evil. Go ahead. Hey, brothers, learn to thank the Lord for the evil in your life, man. Learn to thank the Lord for the chastening, for the hell you catch. Because you could be dead. You know? The Lord could just take your life, but instead he chastened you. He punished you. Okay? So learn to pray to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai when you're in a low estate, when you catch a hell. You're going to need it in the time of Jacob's trouble. Go ahead. For which cause we faint not. For which cause we faint not. Go ahead. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The inward man. The Lord is looking at your inward man. So our outward man perish. The inward man is being renewed day by day. Day by day. The Lord is chastening us. He's renewing us day by day. According to your inward man. Right? We're in the flesh, man. You know? That the flesh is desperately wicked. It's contrary to the spirit. You go off. You catch hell. But the Lord is looking at your mind. Okay? Your la'ab. Your spirit. Is your spirit right? Your spirit's got to be right when the Lord comes, man. Your spirit has got to be right when the Lord comes, man. Alright? And that's what this truth does for us. It renews us. Okay? Through the transforming of our mind. Okay, the scriptures talk about that, the transforming of our mind. Okay, be, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, though you once knew. So, you know, this thing, you know, is it, for us to grow. Scriptures say what? Grow in the grace thereof. All right? Continue. Go ahead. Verse 17, it says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. A light affliction. I don't care what you went through on this earth, man. It's not compared to Yahweh Shai and what Yahweh Shai went through. So our affliction is considered a light affliction, man. Even if you got to see the guillotine, man. And I pray Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai put the spirit on all of the brothers that got to see it, that got to go through it, you know, to endure that, man. You know, but even that, that's a light affliction, man. It's all a light affliction. What we're going through is a light affliction, man. Because we're going to get eternal glory, eternal power, infinite power. Go ahead, Ak. And it says, work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Woo, you see that? So this light affliction, it can't compare to eternal glory. One day, brothers, you're going to wake up in the kingdom, man. Remember that. <laughs> you're going to wake up as a god. That's coming, no matter what. One day you're going to wake up as a God. Okay, and it starts with the elect. 
you know but guess what all, all israel will, will be saved you know which is the beauty of it all but this is really for the elect remember that brothers one day you're gonna wake up you're gonna be a god and you're gonna look back at this shit you're gonna it's gonna be a bad dream it's gonna be like a snap of the fingers like damn that's that was it you know right now it's like you can't really i can't you can't even explain that you can't fathom that it's like what are you talking about because it's like it feels like forever it feels like we in a loop of fucking hell it's just like every day it's the same shit same bullshit wake up work go to sleep wake up work deal with a fucking woman that fucking gives you hell <laughs> you go back to sleep wake up fucking it's a it's a loop of hell we're in a loop of hell right now and it feels like forever but the lord is going to show us this ain't this ain't forever man he going to truly show us what forever is when you wake up as a god when you wake up in rulership and then you're never going to go back to this so it's like this chastening that we're going through it's nothing compared to what we're going to get man we're going to get eternal glory eternal life eternal riches you're never going to be sad again you're never going to be down you're going to have so much women it's going to be ridiculous children beyond belief you know you're going to have yahweh shai you're going to be able to meet with yahweh shai talk with yahweh shai the father yahweh you know there's so much glory you know planets brothers going to walk beaches search the depths of the ocean we're going to have everything man you know so this little this little light affliction it's not going to be compared to the eternal glory brothers is about to get, man. All right? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I was going to say, oh, hey, the brother said we're going to wake up as a god. Hey, 1 Corinthians 15 say you show, you're going to be changed by the twinkling of your eye, man. Mm. So as soon as you blink, you're going to be changed to a god, man. <laughs> hey, that's what we're waiting for. Everything we go through now is nothing compared to what we're going to get forever, you know? Con. Hey, Shalom to the uh, brothers and sisters that are tuning in. Shalom, Shalom. Uh, was that it, Ronette? Kind of, um, yeah, the scripture you wanted me. Yeah, it was, uh, uh, grab, um, actually, I'm going to grab this. This is 1 Peter 4 and 1. It says, for as much then as Hamashiach or Christ, all right, which we don't like to say that word Christ, but the Hebrew is uh, Hamashiach. It says, for as much then as Hamashiach has suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourself likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. You see that? So we, we have to arm ourselves likewise with the same mind as Yahushai. All right? You know, the ones that suffer in the flesh have ceased from sin you know when you were living a sin like a sinful life life was like easy almost it was like you know you just it was just like a, a loop of it was bullshit you know but it was like you didn't realize how bad it was you weren't awoke to you know the hell that you're in you weren't awoke to being a captive a slave right. you know and then you woke up to being a slave and you woke up to you know having to repent get your life right and then you you, you, you cease from sin and then you get the chastening of the Lord. You know, you really understand when you catch hell now. Now you understand why things happen. And it can play a toll, man, on your mind. But the he that endures to the end is going to be saved. The strong is going to survive, man, at the end of the day. All right? And we want to be numbered amongst the elect, man. Yahweh Shai Rata Zah. Babu Krasha, Babu Krasha, Babu Krasha. All right? This is uh, Ezra 9 and 13. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our, our great trespass, seeing that thou, our God, has punished us less than our iniquities deserve and has given us such deliverance as this. So we want deliverance, men. And it says, seeing that our God, Yahweh, has punished us less than our iniquities deserve. Hey, we all deserve death, man, when you really, you know, weigh it on a scale. If, if, if we were, you know, if we were going to be judged according to the law, we'd all be dead. You know? 
So the, the hell you catch is less than what you really deserve, man. You got to examine that as a man. You got to see that's why you got to learn to love to suffer. Learn to catch hell. When you catch hell, learn to laugh at it, man. Learn to brush it off the shoulder like, damn. You know, you know, look at the good in things. At least I'm still alive. At least, you know, the Lord's still dealing with me. All praise to see how about me. I was shy, man. Right? Um, you got any more scriptures? God, this is uh, Hebrews 12 and 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, mm. nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Yeah, so don't faint, brothers. Don't give up. You know, fight the good fight of faith. Prove it to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shaddai. You want that power, man. Go ahead. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Right, if you got a son... Or if you got children, if you truly love your children, you're going to chasten them. You're going to put them on the right path. And, you know, children are, uh, what's the, what's the uh, lack of better words, like ditzy. You know, just kind of going with the wind. They don't really, you know, weigh things out on the, on the scale, so to say. So, you know, they're ignorant. You know, they don't know. So when a, a child is getting ready to touch a hot stove, you got to smack them up a little bit. Hey, don't touch the hot stove, man. You're gonna burn yourself. You know? If you didn't love your son, you're gonna sit there and watch World Star. Watch your son burn his hand and shit. Nah, man. The Lord is not like that with us. He's gonna chasten us. He's gonna rebuke you. He's gonna put you on trial. Alright? Kind of, especially these days and age, you know, a lot of people they don't chasten their, their children, man. I wonder why they be doing some crazy shit, man. Yeah, now you got children fucking going in the store shooting everybody up. You got children killing their brothers over a few dollars, you know, because they don't know how to live, all right? They didn't have no, that, that comes from not having a father figure in your life as well, man. Right. You know, that's why you need a father in the house, man. And all starts from when they're young, man. Yeah, like sponges. And, you know, they learn from the woman. The woman doesn't know how to deal with shit, man. Mm -hmm. She goes to straight complaining, crying. She deals with things emotionally. Men are to, to deal with things logically, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the scriptures say, train up a child while he's young, man. Yep. You shall not depart. That's you it. You know, roughly paraphrasing, man. So, hey, a, a mother's not going to chasten the child how you need it to be chastened, man. That's why they cry when you yell at the child and don't do that because they feel that masculine energy, man. Yeah. You know, that's why there's a balance, masculine and feminine. You know, mm -hmm. they need both. That's it. Kind of, but, uh, Continue on reading. It says, uh, Hebrews 12 and 6. It says, oh, verse 7, Salaki. It says, If ye endure chastening, Yahweh Bashim Shah dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? You see that? So, you know, if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. Okay? And what does Yasharala mean? Prince of the power. Prince of the power. Prince of the Most High God. Sons of God. Okay. Peace to the gods. You know. So if you endure the chastening, if you endure unto the end, and you can deal with the humiliation, then you can. Then that proves to the Lord you can deal with the power, man. And that's what we want. Don't. We're supposed to suffer in this truth, brothers. You, you got to suffer. You got to catch hell. You just can't give up. Remember, you have the Lord. Remember what Yahweh went through. For you. Okay. For your sins. Okay? Right. To keep you alive. Alright? Because if it wasn't for you, how shot, we'd all be dead, man. We'd be dead. Alright? Uh, it says, verse 8, But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons? Mm. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Right. So, you know, some brothers have fathers or you might have leaders in your life that have corrected you, set you on a right path. You might even have some teachers in the world that were, uh, quote unquote, a good teacher. You know, certain brothers got different experiences, you know, um, or, you know, family figures put you in check. You gave them reverence. Right. Go ahead. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? Hmm. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, mm. but he for our profit 
that we might be partakers of his holiness. You see that? So, you know, at the end of the day, the Lord's chastening is for our benefit, our profit. Okay, to ultimately mold us into the, the men that he wants us to be. Okay, the men of Yahweh Bashmi, Yahweh Shai, man. Kind of have this last scripture where he was um, talking about Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53 and 10. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. Mm, talking about Yahweh Shai. It pleased the Lord, you know, Yahweh to bruise his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. He hath put him to grief. Mm. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, mm. he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. You see that? So it pleased Yahweh to bruise his son for the offering up of sins, man, to be that sacrificial lamb for the nation of Israel, man. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have to go get a lamb when you sin. You know, that sacrifice, that sacrifice, you know, the sacrificial to go sacrifice it on the altar. No, we have Yahweh Shai. OK, you have Yahweh Shai. And that's the reason you alive today, man. All right. So that's why you got to give reverence to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Mm -hmm. Bahashim In the name of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, bringing this out, it just shows, hey, the father is pleased with chastisement, man. Mm -hmm. He even chastised his own begotten son. So how much more of us, man? That's it. So we could be joint heirs, man. That's right. It would be image of Yahweh Shai, man. That's it. You and know? That's what that's what this walk is about, man. All right? So you know what that, you know, I, I think we ran through enough scriptures. You know, Lord willing, it was edifying to the hopeful elect right under the hour mark. We want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Kakodash. Lord willing, it was edifying to the hopeful elect. Prophets in Babylon, Tampa, Florida. Don't want to see the elders and apostles of the great millstone. Till next time, Shalom. Shalom.